Uh, the stars are still around. Another argument in favor of a, and by the way, this is number four. Uh, another argument in favor of a fake moon landing is that there are no stars depicted in photos of the event. If the moon has no atmosphere, we should be able to see an entire lit up sky lit by distant stars, right? Correct. But that ignores some basic technological constraints behind photographing things on the moon. In such a dark background with objects so brightly lit by the sun, the aperture of the camera needed to be kept small in order to photograph the lander and the astronauts clearly and sharply and not blurred objects from the Blair Witch Project or something. This invariably leaves the camera unable to pick up any faint starlight in the background sky. Again, this is no way for you to know for yourself. It's no seven easy ways for you to know for yourself. This is simply believe what we say, that this is because of the camera. The problem is, is that the astronauts themselves couldn't see stars on the moon. Well, hi, everyone, and greetings from northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, today we have episode four of Jaronism's Seven Easy Ways You Can Tell for Yourself We Never Went to the Moon. In this episode, he's asking, where are the stars? Why didn't the Apollo astronauts see or photograph stars while they were on the moon? Now, the conspiracy theory is that if they had photographed the stars, astronomers could have tracked them down and found out they weren't on the moon. But that's really not the answer. The answer is they didn't photograph the stars because they weren't trying to photograph the stars. They were there to photograph the moon. And as a result, their camera apertures and shutter speeds were set to deal with the bright conditions on the surface of the moon. And as a result, their cameras were set to properly record their subject. They didn't see the stars because if they had set the cameras to photograph the stars, the moon would have simply been glared out. But we'll go through this and listen to Jaron's argument and see what we can figure out with it. So cue up the music and let's go. I do realize that when you were on the moon, you had very little time for gazing upwards. But could you tell us something about what the sky actually looks like from the moon, the sun, the earth, the stars, if any, and so on? So what the, you know, what the sky looked like from the moon, the sun, the earth, the stars, if any. The sky is uh, a deep black uh, when viewed from the moon as it is when viewed from uh, cislunar space, the space between the earth and the moon. So from the surface of the moon, the, star, the sky is a deep black, the same as it is in cislunar space, the space between the earth and the moon. The, uh, the earth is the only visible object other than the sun that the earth is the only visible object other than the sun can be seen, although there have been some reports of seeing planets. I myself did not see planets from the surface, but I suspect they might uh, be visible. So they couldn't see stars. They couldn't see anything other than the, the earth. But do you see his, his problem with speaking about this is because of the fact that they knew there weren't going to be any stars in the photos. Well, here's where the conspiracy storytellers start going off the rails and their delusions tend to take them over. Now, the interviewer asked Neil Armstrong if he saw objects in the sky. And Armstrong said, yes, I saw the earth and I saw the sun. They're the brightest objects in the sky. The next brightest objects would be the local planets. And he did report that some people had claimed to have seen some planets, but he didn't see any personally. They certainly didn't see any stars, both on the surface of the moon and in the cislunar space. Now, what Jaron is trying to do is take that statement to add to it a level of sinister intent. Well, he didn't see them and he didn't expect to see them. Well, he probably didn't because he knows how the eye works and he knows how cameras work. And then he take, then Jaron takes that statement and moves it on to say that, or imply that that's because he knew the stars wouldn't be there. Well, in a way, he did know the stars wouldn't be there because he wouldn't be able to see them. It doesn't mean that the stars were not physically there. Now, another thing that's interesting is in the Apollo capsule, there was a, a celestial sextant to help with course corrections. And they used it quite extensively during the Apollo program. What did they shoot? Stars. They could see stars because there were filters on it. It must have been impossible for him because he knew that in the simulated environment in the studio, there was going to be no stars. So when he says, could you see any stars from the surface? Well, um, the earth is the only visible thing in the sky. 
uh, you know, what am I supposed to say here? See, you thought I was kidding. He actually did make that leap of logic. Now, those of us that are boomers and actually heard Neil Armstrong talk, that's just the way he talks. He's a very slow, deliberate man. Listen to YouTube videos of Neil Armstrong talking after Gemini 8 or after the Apollo 11 mission. You'll hear him give this long, deliberate speech, the pauses, the contemplation. That's just the way he talks. You're one of the very, very few people, I think, whose opinion on this is really worth having. In fact, there are only four of you. Do you think, from your knowledge of the moon, having been there, that it is going to be possible in the foreseeable future to set up scientific bases there on anything like a large scale? Oh, I'm quite certain that we'll have such bases uh, in our lifetime. Eh, wrong. <laughs> uh, for those who don't know, Neil Armstrong is no longer with us, so that means his lifetime is now over. And do we have bases on the moon, or did we never go back? Uh, somewhat like the Antarctic stations. Uh, oh, we will. And similar scientific outposts. Continually mm. manned. Oh, continually manned. All this is said by somebody who thinks that, you know, he's been told, well, we'll eventually get there. We just can't get there now. We need you guys to pretend like we did. It will boost morale. The, you, know, go, you know, the entire country will get behind you. You'll get paraded. You'll get celebrated. And then we'll eventually get there in the future, and then, you know, everything will be fine. You know, I put this last segment in not because it really added to the story that much, but because it shows what a morally bankrupt and intellectually dishonest person Jaron is. Neil Armstrong died prematurely due to surgical complications. Now, rather than understand that America lost a hero and mourned him, all Jaron could really say was that, well, I guess his prediction didn't come true because it didn't happen in his lifetime because he's dead. All right. Then he went on to suggest that Neil Armstrong was part of a fraud. He knew he wasn't going to the moon, and he lived with this fraud. All right. There were 400,000 people involved in the space program during the 60s. An interesting story is that Neil Armstrong was the first man on the moon because of the sacrifices of those people. His rotation was not scheduled to come up for Apollo 11. He was moved forward one when the entire crew of Gemini 9 was killed in a plane crash. Do you know their names, Jaron? Do you know the names of the three astronauts that died in the Apollo 1 fire? To suggest that Neil Armstrong was part of a fraud, that Buzz Aldrin was part of a fraud, and by the way, you're probably pretty lucky you didn't call him a fraud. You know what he does with them is just disingenuous and petty. And I just wanted to say that real quick. So are the stars, oh, this is such a problem here with, you know, another argument in favor of the fake moon landing is that there are no stars depicted in the photos of the event. The other problem is the astronauts themselves didn't see stars. Okay. Um, why not? You know, Jaron, probably for the same reason you can't see stars during the daytime here on Earth. You know, I'm just kind of curious. Do you understand the concept behind sunglasses and why we wear them? I mean, do you? Well, guys, I think that we have our answer. It just was the camera settings and what they were there to photograph. They were there to photograph the moon. They were not there to photograph the stars to try and placate people that believe in conspiracies. So if you all have a second, I'd really appreciate you doing something for me. Many of you enjoy my videos and watch them every month, but haven't subscribed to the channel yet. Take a moment, go down and hit that little logo in the lower right corner. Hit the little bell icon with it as well so you get notifications when I put new videos out. I'd really like to have you on Team Bob. So, this is Bob the Science Guy, signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you all very much for stopping by, and I hope to visit with you again soon. Take care.